Hello and welcome to day seven of Virtually 30. Today I am just going to show off the uh, home environments for Oculus and Steam. Uh, we're starting with the Oculus Home setup. Uh, this was in beta for a while um, this year and then it got pushed on full release. And this is my little space. So, you know, you got the jellyfish aquarium above the fireplace to keep the ambiance going and the flowy lamp. A few plants and yeah. Um, navigation in here can be done a couple, hmm. as you can tell, I like basketballs, but navigation can be done a couple ways. So, um, they have teleport, which is pretty comfy and it's my favorite teleport because not only can you pick where you're going easily, but by rotating the analog sticks, you can pick your orientation upon landing. And it even shows like where your sensors are, so you have a pretty good sense of your orientation uh, no matter what. So that alone is just really nice. If I press some of these buttons, so let's see, by logging in and visiting Oculus Home, you get these rewards, which tend to pile up because I don't check them that much. Uh, so you get a shiny box and break it and you get new stuff for your place a little mini cool sign and a blaster i'll do one more of those yeah painting in the cockpit the carpenter's chair and the column table fancy so um you have your dashboards here this is how you grab items to add to your uh to your home this is probably the coolest inventory i've seen in vr because it just it has these little uh quads that represent a rendering into the model so i think the 3d perspective maintains depending on how you're looking at it um, and, you know, if you try to stick your head through them, there's nothing on the other side, so extra fancy. So to get a basketball, you just grab the item, and there it is. I'm using the analog sticks to push the item away from me or bring it back. And once it's close enough, it just kind of locks into your hand, which I'm holding onto with the grip. So the physics in this are, are pretty decent. Um, just because they're good doesn't mean that I'm good, though. So you can sort of point and grab items, which is nice. And then let's see if I want to go over there. And you can turn, this is 45 degrees. Yeah, and 45 degree increments, too. For some reason, the weight on the basketball just doesn't feel right. Mm. There. Oh god. Uh, this is something that I'm still not a huge fan of. Uh, it's easy to grab grouped items like that and mess up your place. But if you noticed, there's an undo button here, which you can hit a few times or however many to kind of reset things. So that's kind of nice. Yeah. Come to me. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, it's nice to know I'm bad at sports in two places and not just one. Sorry, my lens is a little foggy. Oh my god, winner! Yay! So that only took forever. Alright, let's go somewhere else. Uh, actually, I had this place looking a lot crappier, and then my wife came in and redecorated, and I'm pretty grateful for that. The, the one thing that really is mine are these cubes. I put them up there to help block the sun, or the star, because, I mean, that's a lot of, a lot of screen real estate let's see 
It's knocked over somehow. Yep. Oh yeah, um, I think people have talked about this before, but this is kind of a fun way to load your game so you can access your other VR apps as cartridges and then just shove them in here to launch them. So that's kind of a fun interaction. You can have a nice shelf displaying all of the things you use and then just pick them off and plop them in here. Uh, why don't I do that? Because it's pretty easy to launch stuff just from the other Oculus menu. So you get access to essentially what's on the desktop Oculus app through this, which will let you browse the store, make purchases, uh, launch things. You can also just go to your library and you get a nice um, history of things you've launched recently. Social, I have no friends on VR. Notifications, settings. Uh, home will just bring you back to home if you're somewhere else. Um, and probably my favorite thing about using the Oculus uh, interface is the Oculus desktop. Um, I have yet to see something that was as clean and easy to use for desktop interactions. I'll show you the Steam one uh, later, but if I click this, I get access to either of my monitors. Normally I have monitor two up uh, to the side here, and then you just interface with the pointers uh, ray casting onto the screen and acting as cursors. Um, you also have a pop-up keyboard, which happened automatically, but now I can't seem to bring back. There you go. So show keyboard. And again, this doesn't have swipe typing, which is what I'd really like. But you can configure things or tweak stuff uh, on your desktop and then just press the button to make it all go away and go back to your VR game. Uh, and that's really slick and quick to use. So I'm going to use that right now. Now let's get in a comfortable position in the room. All right, there we go. So I'm actually going to use this to bring up, where am I? Uh, Steam VR. Update queued. I think we can still launch. Oh, uh, yeah, it just forces the update to happen sooner. All right, so Oculus Home goes away when you launch another VR app, and Steam VR just kind of fills the space for you. Uh, by default, it's not much to look to, but they added this Steam Home. Steam VR Home, there you go. Uh, again, a place that you can customize somewhat and make more comfortable. And they added turning as well. I think the first time I tried this, there was no way to turn yourself in Home, which is not really useful. Oop. Nice little vantage point. Sorry, headset adjustment. And again, they try to make this really easy to interact with. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, that's, that's perfection. Why mess with it? <laughs> uh, you can go through a few different environments, or I guess there's a social... Uh, side of this too where other people could uh, join you in your room which is kind of nice it kind of reminds me of little big planets uh, lobby system uh, I haven't been here in a while yeah just a little Dark Souls tribute that, that's the oculus menu so uh, the Steam VR interface is pretty straightforward you have another history of things to play access to the store and library, and this is Steam VR's desktop mode, which is a lot more ugly and less uh, modular than the Oculus one. 
So actually trying to type or do something on here is a lot more difficult. Uh, settings to play with, it's a little more enriched, I think, if you're using the Vive, because then you can change how like the front-facing webcam interacts. Uh, and let's go home. But yeah, uh, that's about it. So they're both really nice interfaces, and both have only gotten better uh, for the time that I've seen them. Um, but, you know, there's still kind of a gap between being able to stick in here all the time and do everything you need versus, uh, like, going back to desktop or taking the headset off to do something. Downhill skiing, I have got to try that. Anyway, um, thanks for watching.